All right. Yo, everybody, welcome. What's up, brother? Well, how you doing, bro? Good, man. We're ready to take it home. You excited? Oh, I'm excited, man. You know, <laughs> take it home, as they say. You know it, brother. A lot to talk about. So it's Thursday. We're usually coming at you on Monday, and we're trying Instagram Live right now. So knowing me, it's going to fail because I'm not good with... <laughs> this stuff i'm not good when it comes to uh instagram and things it's saying what up skills? how you doing bro let me see was that through uh okay i got it all right so if you are joining us on youtube or facebook you can put something in the chat here and i can share it up on the screen like wrestling cause from australia what's up johnny and tommy he says what's up brother um if you are on instagram you can just put it in the instagram um feed chat whatever and uh, uh tommy will see it and uh, every now and again he'll break in and read it so everyone will like right now it. for example hd gaming what's good bros can't wait to hang out with you guys again in april for bcw hell yeah we will see you there bro that's battleground so that'd yep. be philly nice mm -hmm. philadelphia so we have the uh, event this sunday guys obviously our big spo event number two Second SPO event. First one was New Year's Eve. And we were just talking the other day that it's kind of cool uh, that SPO's anniversary is on New Year's Eve. That's kind of mm -hmm. fun. Um, mm -hmm. But this Sunday we have an event. We're going to go through it a little bit. Uh, hopefully we'll get some guests, whoever pops on and, and would like to join, we can invite. Uh, it's just going to take a little longer than just inviting you on Instagram. I'm going to have to send you um, a link that you will come on and then you'd be in here with us. So remember that if you want to join um i don't know put it in the chat that you want to join that you'd be up for it you know and then we'll we'll try to get you on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh i can see the chat too now perfect rich by the way i set up the ring for tim okay what's up rich good to talk how to you, you doing bro there. so that's at the new alhambra the or oh, geez the 2300 You're dating yourself there i know <laughs> what's funny is when we all called it the new alhambra like everyone still called it the arena or the ECW arena. Mm -hmm. So no one said new Alhambra hardly, you know, and now that it's the 2300 arena, I'm finally saying new Alhambra. So that's ridiculous. Yeah. So it's old as new. Exactly. So anyway, we so, got Chris Gorish, the rat boy. You want Donnie B in a match? Yeah. All right. Rat boy. Were you mm -hmm. at Columbus sale today? And if so, was it busy? Cause I did not go. <laughs> um, so you want to take them through uh, this weekend's happenings? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about it. So this weekend we have our second event. Uh, the last event was on New Year's Eve, as we talked about. And this one here, if you see the top left, that's the special attraction tag match. Myself and John Zandig against the Feral Face and Canada's own Channing Decker. So this is going to be um, hard hitting and crazy, obviously. The Canadian uh, legend killer teaming up mm -hmm. with the feral face against the two Johns, Zandig and Kashmir. I mean, this is something that, you know, I know everyone has been looking forward to for a long time, including yourself. I'm excited, man. Hell yeah. And the heavyweight title match, Homicide's first defense, Homicide with the incomparable skills, the great versus Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss is coming to Burlington, brother. I'm hella excited for that. I'm super excited for Sunny Kiss in Burlington. I know everyone in Burlington is super excited for Sunny Kiss. And, you know, Skills the Great, shout out. I see you in the chat, bro. He said, bring in trouble on the 18th boss battles. Like, hunted. I know you're keeping it 100. I know that you and Homicide are keeping it 100. And I know that Sunny Kiss is ready to keep it 100 as you guys go 0 to 100 real quick in that ring. <laughs> Boom. Nice. And then, of course... The big doors match. Two out of three doors. Killdozer Matt Tremont versus Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Human game of Rampage from Nintendo. 
is how I look at it, bro. It's going to be hard hitting behemoths. Yep. It's going to be Godzilla versus Kong come to life two out of three doors. And don't forget, you know, with that match, it of course is the retro video game console giveaway. So for every door that is broken in that match, Johnny, we're giving away a retro video game console. Yes, sir. That's right. So at do the math, it's two out of three doors. So you're probably going definitely giving away two, maybe even three. We'll see. But uh, all you have to do is buy advanced tickets and you are in the running uh, automatically. That's where we're going to choose who wins out of who bought advance. And it doesn't need to be front row. Front row is already sold out anyway. It can be general admission. As long as it's advanced ticket, we can get a list with all the names and that's where we get it from. All right. Moving right along, of course, we got the return match for the SPO Women's Championship between Rebecca J. Scott and Christina Marie. You know, these two fought an extremely hard hitting contest last time. You know, they fought to a count out. Uh, Commissioner Jim, of course, you know, giving us the return match. You know, I'm I'm fully expecting somebody to walk out of Burlington with their hands raised and with the SPO women's title around their waist. So, you know, uh, I don't know who it's going to be. It could be either one of them personally. Yeah. And I've said it before the, the, the match they had on the 31st was so like fast paced and it had a certain, I don't even have a, a dynamic to it that I haven't seen in a long time. And when we put clips of it on our story, we had to like, I had to slow it down. I had to use like, three quarter speed just so you could see their arm moving because you almost couldn't even see their arms. They were swinging such fast punches. That's insane. So you're going to get more of that. For real. They were hitting yeah. each other for real. <laughs> yeah. And okay. So there we go. Bufa. IO formerly of all money is legal. Former uh, longest reigning pro wrestling unplugged tag champion of all time. Uh, went to China and has a successful wrestling career in China and he's back and he's going to wrestle another pro wrestling unplugged original lucky 13 lucky 13 um in the days since pw has probably put on 45 pounds easy if not At more least. At right least. right so both of these kids in pw are now wrestling as men in spo wrestling and um it's a retro pw match that i'm excited as hell about i think a lot of people are excited about this including mlj who we just had on the spocast this past monday you could check that out on itunes and wherever podcasts are available excuse me i'm stumbling over my words as i often do but a lot of people are really looking forward to that match and a lot of people who once followed pro wrestling unplugged are now going to get to watch a new era of pro wrestling unplugged with that match. So safe to say that I think that's going to be, you know, not just a, a sellout, you know, behind the guardrail, but a locker room sellout as well. So I'm excited. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm super excited, man. And there he is the Batman of Burlington. Hold on. Let me get this. Uh, let me get this comment off and no, we do not have a response from Mike Bucci yet, my friend. Um, anyway, so the Batman of Burlington will be there. So uh, tomorrow, so this is Thursday night we're on right now, the 15th. So tomorrow, the 16th, I'm meeting him at the Mitchell Firehouse at 10 a.m. to film a promo. He actually used the words film a promo. So this guy, hmm. his dad was a big wrestling fan. He knows what he's getting himself into here. I think this is going to be interesting. Um, so look for that. I'm going to try to have it released tomorrow, like by the early afternoon. So check hmm. that out if you can. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love Batman, Burlington City Batman coming to the boss battles. It's going to be something spectacular. And, you know, I didn't mean to get away from this, of course. I just I, I knew I had to, of course, you know, give Batman some love. But, um, yeah. you know, before we get into the uh, scramble tag team match, you know, let's talk real quick about the return of Joe Clean and Live Danger. And, of course, the debut of a certain Pat Dynamite. I mean, Johnny, we've gotten a lot of responses. A lot of people are excited to see Joe Clean again. And a lot of, you know, story, of course, popping online, you know, with Corazon and Live Danger. I mean, what, what do you think is going to go down? Well, you know, it's funny. A lot of the people I talk to in my town, people in my family, 
um, that came to a wrestling event for the first time. When I say to them, how did you like the event? Oh, I loved it. One of the first things they've been saying to me is we loved the janitor, the Joe clean. They all just something about the way he came out of the crowd. I mean, he was literally tying a trash can, a trash bag and pulling it out of the trash can <laughs> as the guy was challenging him from the ring. And he came in the ring and he doesn't let the crowd dictate his pace. So he no. makes the crowd wait for what he wants them to wait for. And the crowd's happy they do because it works. And he's, he's a veteran in new guy clothing, we'll say. Um, and live danger, they're dynamic. They're live danger. They're the boys, man. They're, they're like as backseat as it gets without being backseat. You know, like I see so much in them of, of myself and when I was that age and the things that the, the, they're putting the time into the gym, they're putting the time into promos. Like if, if anyone out there does not follow them on Instagram, it's live wire, Charlie, and it's uh, danger Ross follow them because like twice a week they're putting up promos and they're good. Yeah. And even if they're not good, they're trying. That's awesome. You know, you put out the trick is to have 51% of your stuff be good, especially when you're just starting out like these guys, you know, everything can't be good. Don't beat yourself up, but everything they're doing is pretty damn good and great for the level they're at in the business. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I a hundred percent agree. I mean, that's why, you know, that's why we took such a liking to them is because, you know, for as new and as fresh as they are to pro wrestling, they're good dudes. You know, yes. they're just guys that you want to be around. So I, I'm i I'm excited for them. And I'm really excited to see, you know, what pro wrestling uh, offers them and what they offer pro wrestling. Because, you know, I think personally, uh, there's something out there for Live Danger. And I think yeah. they're an entity and they're special. And I like them a lot. Yeah, definitely. And they've sort of buddied up with Sloppy the Clown. Uh, you know, I'm just going to tell the Sloppy the Clown story real quick. Yeah, I was do at, it up, bro. <laughs> I was at the gym Christmas Eve, and I, me and the gym manager stepped outside to talk. And we're outside mm -hmm. talking. Probably, I think we were talking about the event. I was trying to get him to the event. And a little, you know, four-wheeler comes by with a little gremlin on it. You know, and we're like, what the hell is this? And it just goes right by us. And you could tell it was remote controlled, but you couldn't see who was doing it. And then it pranks these people down at the Marshalls parking lot. And then I see him in Walmart later. Um, so I'm talking to him and I'm like, this thing's cool, cool, cool shit. You know, I checked him out on Instagram. He's got, he said he had like 75,000 followers and woke up one day and now he's down to like 40 or 50 or something. Um, what? but yeah, he, he was telling me about that. I'll have to ask him more about why that happened. But, uh, yeah, so he's going to be there with this thing. And, um, I don't know, live danger and that guy, they, they just hit it off. So mm -hmm. I almost feel like Sloppy the Clown, which you can follow on Instagram, Sloppy the Clown. Um, I almost feel like he's like their manager now. Their manager, their mascot, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's th th they're a package deal, and you yeah. know, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I, I think it's a good, uh, a good business move if, if, if Sloppy the Clown and Live Danger show up together because you know, one without the other, it's like you know, I mean, look at what happened. Sloppy the Clown nowhere to be found when Live Danger was out there training, you know, for the competition, playing that MK. You know, had Sloppy been there, you know, it's, I, I mean. I, I don't know, man, but <laughs> one thing I can tell you, it, yes, he's on sort of like right. this sloppy, sloppy. The clown is on his way to being a social media influencer and we're getting him while he's still approachable. And hopefully when he's <laughs> like, he's going to remember us and like still yes. bless us with his presence in Spo. When he's rolling, when he's, when he upgrades the quad to like some big SUV rolling on dubs and it, and it, you know, has the hydraulics and all, and all that yep. and like front rear yep. view cameras instead yep. of the GoPros. Yeah. Yeah. And all the different, all the like illegitimate sloppies driving around everywhere. Sloppy well, junior and three yeah, near and four near. It's not good. It's not good. But yeah, so <laughs> Um, yo, why don't you show the promo? You want to show the promo now instead of at the end? Since we were just yeah. talking about live danger. Might yeah, well. let's do it. Yeah, let's do it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it's Wrestling Talk Conscious Machine 413. Go and play. You got time for another game? You sure? Yeah, B. I spoke to the bags because they said we don't got to be in Burlington until later. Oh, okay. All right. I just want to make sure. I want to get uh, get some reps in before we got that competition, that giveaway that they're doing. What giveaway? What you talking about? 
Oh, Spo Wrestling, they're giving away retro game consoles later. Where? Yeah. Nah, that's pretty yeah. tough, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, what? What? It powered off. Uh, come on. Bro. All right, let's, let's go play another game. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. We out. Yes. Did you used to play that? Oh, I love Mortal Kombat. One of my favorites. That was Street Fighter. The one before it was Mortal Kombat, but yeah. I was saying earlier, so at the Mitchell Firehouse, they're giving away the video game consoles. What, like a raffle or Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Wrecking Ball and Kill Dozer, they're at the two out of three doors match. Every door that's broken, they're giving one away. No way, dude. It's so goofy, it's over. Dude, that is over. <laughs> Dude, I love the way Connor goes, hey, hey, like that, and jumps I, I, up. Like, <laughs> yeah, like New York guy on the street hailing a taxi, you know? That was hysterical. Awesome. They're super funny, animated. Man. Yeah. Dude, if we, if we ever get Matt Riddle, we know who he's got to do a promo with. That's a fact. Oh, they can be all broed up. I think that's a that's a match made in heaven. We might have to hit up Riddle and uh, you know put him onto Live Danger and you know see what's up. Rap Boy saying that they need a manager, which in Rap Boy language means Rap Boy wants to be their manager. But the problem, Rap Boy, is we just have Sloppy the Clown as the manager. So that's um, right. On April seventh, we'll have you versus Sloppy the Clown, and the winner gets to be their manager. And that match will take place at Columbus Farmers Market in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pre-show to the pre-show. It will not be on the grounds of Mitchell in any way, shape, or form. Nope. Speaking of, real quick, I just want to do a real. <laughs> <He's okay>. uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> no, you know what? What? What the hell? If you're willing, we'll make it happen. <laughs> oh, that is over. Oh, Christ. I think we got someone. Let's add him in. Yes. Commissioner Jim. How are you guys? What's up, man? What's going on, Jim? How are you? Here? I, I, I'm good. Now, I had difficulty. I, don't, I was trying to do, I think I was trying to do it the right way, which was actually the wrong way to, to get in here, but I found my way. Not bad Jim. for an old fart. I, I texted one of my friends earlier and said, I'm trying to do Instagram live through our software. I said, I already have a white room at the crazy house booked for tonight. You know, the old Arn Anderson, we already got, we already got our, our hospital room booked. Right, right, right. Yeah. So how you been, man? Good, good. Took some go. time What's off. Up, Jim? Took Look, some time from... off to get, um, to get my wrist worked on. I had uh, tendonitis in my, in my wrist. So I had surgery for that and all's good. And when it's time for me to get back into the ring as a referee, um, I will be able to do that. Do I even have to ask why you have it in that particular body part? Um, actually, they told me it's because of the work that I do now outside of wrestling. Um, they said it actually had nothing to do with 30 years of wrestling. It, was, it wasn't my counting hand. It was my planting oh. hand. Oh, okay. Um, so it had to do with, not, I, I have a, I guess every, you know, anybody can know this. I have a courier service, um, for a real job. I own the company and deliver boxes is a lot. So carrying boxes with one hand, as opposed to two hands is not <laughs> the best idea. Yeah. You need some local young boys, bro. I'll fill in until we can find younger boys. We need people to help you. <laughs> carry well, you, found, the you found a couple of younger boys that help you out. That's true. That is true. That is. But yo, the younger they are, the better they are with like the internet. Like, see how you couldn't get on here? I right. have the same problem. But if they're like 12 or 15 or 17 or 21, they can like launch a satellite from their computer. Right. Yeah. I and swear. I don't, my, my, my kids and my grandkids don't live in the area. So I'm, I'm absolutely helpless. <laughs> Johnny, I need you. <laughs> That's funny. Because you live actually pretty close to me, I think. I'd, yeah, I'd be yeah, willing to make a half hour away from each other. 
I, I could make a tech call as long as it's like two or three tech issues at once. <laughs> we'll we'll make them all pile up. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So what do you think of the show? Obviously, you put together a pretty good lineup. Everyone's excited about it. Yeah, so I, I, I think it's um, I think it's built up really well. I, I think a lot. I think a lot of uh, the, the talent that you see on the show were were on last one, and and that's for a good reason. Everybody liked them. Mm -hmm. um, I was particularly impressed with with the ladies match, uh, which is one reason that we're bringing them back for uh the women's championship uh they were they were impressive as hell uh not only against each other but as, as individual people they they really worked their asses off so Absolutely. Uh, that, that was one thing i was i was really impressed with um so i you know i wanted to make sure we brought them back yeah and you know the women have talked to me and they're they're excited that you are excited for them so it's just funny how you watch these feedback loops like a veteran like you who's coming in and then takes time out of his day to say hey i watched that match i enjoyed it here's some feedback i hope you understand how good these girls are like you didn't have to do that right that wasn't yeah, part I mean, of your deal i mean as as you know training people for a, a handful of years um you know, that that's kind of instinctive that, you know, you, you might take someone off to the side and say, hey, here's what I saw. Uh, it was great. Or, you know, eh, I, you know, fix this a little bit or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Anyone has any questions for Jim Molino about ECW, about his work owning his own wrestling federation, about his oh. work as GM, about his work um as referee on the indies with guys Move, like Mike Keener and Finnegan. <laughs> <laughs> moving boxes. <laughs> That's funny. So what are you up to? What do you do? Do you watch TV? Yeah. Yeah. What are you, um, anything good? Um, I, I'll tell you, I just started watching a new show started the, after the Super Bowl called tracker. Uh, good with, uh, yeah. With, uh, I forget his name. The, the guy who was in, uh, this is us. Um, Josh, something or other. I don't know. I know I, who I you can't mean. I can't remember names. Um, I can but see he's, he's basically not, not really a bounty hunter because a bounty hunter, you know, does stuff for um, bonds people. But this guy goes out and looks for people that are missing and collects on the reward. Nice. And just it was a cool setup. I'll check that um, out. So that and now now's the time of year that I'm watching um, hockey a little more closely i'm a big hockey fan always been and uh, getting ready for the the playoffs and with the flyers looking like they might make the playoffs cross your fingers uh it's even more intense to watch you're a flyers fan yeah I'm born nice. born and raised <laughs> how about you like eagles too uh no okay gotcha this is, the the only philadelphia team i like is is, is the flyers and it it's really just because I'm not a fan of the other sports that much. I'm not that much of a, of a, not a baseball fan at all. And definitely not a, a basketball fan. It was short and fat, never played basketball in my life mm. uh, or, or worth a crap en enough to get a, a passing grade in gym class in high school. So that's, yep. about, that's about it. we got a um, question from the chat from Greek geeking out metal geek. He has his own podcast too, uh, Jim. So he's probably buttering you up for the ask. But uh, <laughs> if he's a metal like... geek, I'm one. Oh, you already know him? No, no, no. I'm saying if, if he is a metal. metal oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he's asking, what was it like working with Paul Heyman? Uh, crazy. It, it really was. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, everything was last minute. Um, you know, just we we would come in not knowing except for maybe two matches, if, if that. Um, we, you know, before that we worked with, or I, I keep saying we, and I really mean myself and, and the, the original ECW guys, but, you know, if you worked for Eddie Gilbert, he came in, hung up the, the lineup on, on the door. He, he had three weeks of TV written out. Paul comes in, you knew, like I said, maybe the main event, 
and this is not, not for pay-per-views. Well, actually, maybe for some of the pay-per-views. <laughs> but, but, you know, you would come in and, and you would know the main event. And Paul would sit down at the table and open up his book and start writing stuff down. And what he was doing is writing people's names, who he sees. All right, I'll put this guy here. Blah, 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 blah. And it, it's 10 after 8 and you're still looking for the first match. You know, so he might give you the, there are times where we, we got the first match or first two matches and then it would be, <laughs> the rest of the show would be on the wall when you came back from the, from the ring. Wow. That's, see, now to me, like, that would be anxiety causing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. I don't. Trent, you know, my old tag partner, Trent, he used to love going late to shows. Ah, as long as we're there by the bell. That's, right. that's, a, that's the old Brian Lee thing. <laughs> but you know give, what? Brian he, Lee told us if, if you got there late, they were the, the office would be mad at you. But if you got there just before your match, they're so happy to see you. Oh, that did all good. <laughs> get out there. Just get out there. Yeah, like Bri Brian knew exactly how long it would take him to get from his house to uh, the Nashville Fairgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is crazy. Oh, man. But I'll tell you, man, that the anxiety that would cause me because I'm like Trent could go out there and say, let's do this, this and this and remember it, which counterintuitive me. I'll go over it and then forget it two seconds later. So I got to go be alone and shut my eyes and go over it and over it and over it and over it and over. It and, over it. and then I'm ready. And you see, know? now I raised in the in the business, you know, a few years before you call it in the uh, ring, call it in the ring, Another which I can finish. do. I've been forced to do it many times. I have yeah. that muscle. I just don't like to flex it as often as I that, should. That's that's what I like to do as a referee is know as very little as I need to know. Because I feel that my natural reaction to things is what's important to a relationship between the the wrestlers, the in-ring talent, and the fans. They, they can see you know, emotions on, on, on my face or the way I react to things. And I, hopefully that leads the way the, the fans react. Do you remember when Nitro was real big, there used to be rumors and it's probably true that their commentary didn't really know the show. They, they had Wrong. to do genuine reactions. I, I believe that. And, and, and I, I wish more people would, you know, do that. I, I think, I think that's, you know, give them a basic outline as to the match and the talent and where they're going with what they're trying, the story that they're trying to tell. And then just basic from there. You don't need, I don't think you need to use the, uh, the announcers need to have the, I hate this word, script in front of them. Right. Right. And not only that, I was trying to think, imagine being an announcer on TV, right? You have the script in front of you. You have someone talking next to you. You have the match going on, and you might have someone in the back talking to you in your right. ear, telling you what to say. Right. I have trouble controlling the banners that go across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> right. God well, bless them. Like Corey Graves must think a mile problem. a minute. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how they do it. I, you know, right. Joey Styles did the show by himself without anyone in his ear. You know without anyone really in his ear and he did it awesomely and, and he did and, and he knew he knew the story he knew what we were trying to express and he knew he when not to shit. talk he yeah. knew when not to talk if it was just me as commentator i would think i needed to talk the whole time any silence mm -hmm. would drive me nuts he was able to keep those silences man that takes i don't know man that's right tough. because because the tension of what was in the ring was, was more important than what he had to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's up, JP? Welcome. What's up, guys? I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, no. Not training right now, getting the work in. And as a matter of fact, I'm here with some special guests. Yeah. Showing up. Yeah. Ah, showing up. <laughs> oh, wow. How long we just showed the their, we just showed their promo. Like yeah, 10 minutes ago. Listen, guys. Yeah, we're getting that work in. We're training hard. Getting ready for some Spo Wrestling Boss Battles this yeah. Sunday. <laughs> yes, like a Nitro party, guys. This is yeah, guys. Yeah, 
trying out the new threads. They're going to debut these uh, bad boys on Sunday at the boss battles. But uh, yes, in the sir. meantime, we're about to just go back into the ring, get that work in. We just wanted to say what's up, guys. Couldn't miss out on oh, this yeah. one. Yes, sir. All right, you guys. Kick, kill it, man. Kill yes, it. sir. Thank you, guys. Yep. See you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. JP and Live Danger putting in that work, showing off those new threads. Yeah, Connor looking hella tan, it. hella jack. I love it. I love it. It I reminds me guys. of like when Ultimate Warrior wore the singlet that one time, and it was so <laughs> badass. It was. I bought the action figure. I was like, hell yeah, I want that figure. <laughs> if the yep. two of them can both like fire up and both like drop the singlet at the same time, I think the roof on that place would explode. Oh, yeah. Jim, remember um, High Voltage? Yeah. Mm. They never. That was Matt Hardy's old name. But I mean, there was like a, they never went past a certain level, but they could have. I mean, yeah. but did you know, did you guys know the gimmick behind that? That was, that was uh, Matt Hardy back before he and Jeff, when they were like first doing like uh, job matches, Matt Hardy sent in a tape where he was in character and his character was high voltage. I kid you not. So if you go and you look up like, you know, look up Matt Hardy, uh, WCW high voltage promo. They literally took that and they made that the basis for the high voltage tag team. That's crazy. Yeah. That's not the first time something like that's happened. Right. But Jim, you got to think that the Hardys would have been like 17 year old kids at this or 18, right. 19. They were, yeah, I mean, they, were, they were, yeah. You know, they were, they were, you know, 16, 17 years old when they were doing uh, Omega wrestling, in, you know, mm -hmm. in, in North mm -hmm. Carolina. And the pros are stealing from them. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Never send your stuff in. Right. Never. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I thought of a great idea. But you need me there to, yeah. to execute it. Hey, yeah, it's right. a great idea. Yeah, right. Stolen. <laughs> yeah, right. And then oh you're, you know, gosh. then then the your ideas on TV next week. You're like, <laughs> Yeah. I guess it was a good idea. I'll tell you, man. Nowadays the guys in the locker room call Matt call moves by using other wrestlers names. That didn't happen in my day. Like, okay, I'll hit you with the Jay lethal. Right. <laughs> right. And then you, yeah, everyone, knows, and everyone knows what they're talking about. Never do you get a, what? They're always just like, Oh yeah, right. Sure. Of course. <laughs> Cause we all yeah, have. I would, I, I, there, there are names that I still don't know. But, right. You know, guy will tell me, you know, I'm going to use my, you know, triple Lindy. Wow. That's from that's from back to school when Rodney played his pits. <laughs> that, that was that was the, that was his dive. The triple that was his Lindy. dive. Yeah, right. the triple Lindy. That's my that's favorite movie was, of all time. Called moves that I I you know don't know what it is and it's you know but basically a, a you know a, a body slam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, do the triple Lindy. Out. What right. body slam? All right. <laughs> Yeah, Every, that'll be the mullet out there. Dumb it down for me. Yeah, tackle drop down, and then I'll hit the Jim Mullino. How's that, <laughs> everyone? All right, yeah, I'll take that tonight. Right, but I don't know. It's just funny that that happened, and that that certain guys are that known too. You know, like Jay Lethal used to be in Special K in Ring of Honor when I wrestled there as a young boy, and now he's like the shit, and everyone knows him. And it's so neat to see it. You know, right? I mean, you know, meanwhile, I'm living in. <laughs> You know, these guys are millionaires, God bless them, but it 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 is nice to still see it. Yeah, I mean, you know, from the days of when I was working at after ECW shut down, I went to the Monster Factory and helped out there. And there we got some guys in and there there's still two of them there. Um from from when I was at, at the Monster Factory and, and when I started OTW off on our own away from the Monster Factory, we still sent a couple of guys you know so mm -hmm. you know it's good to see guys get to their achieve their goals that they want yeah tell people watching or who may see this later how they can book uh the ecw referees like yourself mike keener uh finnegan etc um well i'm on twitter at and there it is on the bottom there let's see there we go at jim Molino. um you can catch me there on twitter uh, facebook same thing and uh, just DM me or, or message me or whatever. And um, 
I can hook you up with the other guys. And, you know, we're trying, we're, we're really trying hard for, for WrestleMania weekend that, um, at least John and myself, we, we want Mike too. Um, and we think that John and I would be a great, um, signing people, you know, come for signing. We were the only two guys that were in ECW from day one to the last day. Um, maybe it's just our, our own ego <laughs> that thinks that. No, nope, it's uh, your backyard. But yeah, you know, hey, it's not going to cost anything to fly us in. Um, you, you might, we might ask you to pay for our parking. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to take the train. Yeah, you'll take a drone. You'll take a drone into the city. Right. But I could take the, the speed line, but that's true. I was saying, <laughs> you, yo, could you, you imagine could not? River line. Yeah, we can. I was telling people that you hop on at, uh, Patco to the River Line yeah. to Burlington. Uh, center and it's a five block walk you know yeah. so yeah it's 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 an but, easy one but i was saying if i lived in the city and i was not a wrestling fan i would just leave for that whole week oh yeah i i mean i'm i'm thinking leaving in um in uh 2026 when they, when they have the world cup fourth fourth of july which is the 250th anniversary of of the country they're, they're all the same week and then there then you have Baseball's having the world, not the World Series, the All Star Break in Philly that that year too. I'm like, I'm going to go away for the month of July. Yeah, and sell and, space in my driveway. And I found out that if you the statistic that Philly's one of the number one tourist mm -hmm. in the United States because mm -hmm. of all that history. Because of all like, the history, yeah, and and we don't think of it because we don't think of going to that. Right. You know, it's just, oh, I don't want to go into the city. <laughs> you know, when I was a, a kid in, in elementary school, one of the trips uh, for, I think it was first grade, every year the first grade went to the Betsy Ross house. You know, that, or, you, or you went to the Franklin Museum or, or you went to Independence Hall. And people right. come from other parts of the country to see things that, that we, you know, neglect because we, you know, could, could go any day we wanted. Yeah, we actually have a Betsy Ross house here in Burlington. That's crazy. There, really? Burl Burlington used to be the capital of New Jersey. Yeah, back in the day, right. a colonial New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's some stuff here like that. Um, a couple well, other I'm, people I'm right stayed down here. the road from from Haddonfield, and, and there's a lot of stuff in Haddonfield too. Kings Highway. There was there was a battle right down Kings Highway in Haddonfield. Really? Yeah, yeah. They reenacted every year. I had no idea. I mean, I know about Valley Forge and I know about the recreation of George Washington crossing the Delaware right. every year. Um, but I didn't know about that. That's awesome. Yeah, there were there were there were battles all through South Jersey because you figure Philadelphia was the the you know home base for, for the Revolutionary War, basically, with with Washington, you know, with like you said, Valley Forge and Trenton. Um, yep. South Jersey was a big, you know, uh, big part of that. The Revolutionary War, you know, figuring blocking mm -hmm. the Delaware River, blocking the British coming up the Delaware. I, I watched that show Turn on AMC, all about the war and and all that. And if it's true, and it's supposed to be, the whole war um, came down to one lady hanging a certain color petticoat on her clothesline. If she would have hung a different color, then the whole thing would have went like that. Was our main spy was an, a housewife hanging a petticoat. Yeah, like, I mean, America shouldn't have won. Like you watch that stuff and you realize how far behind we were as George Washington. And then imagine you're at a casino and you're making bets. You would never have bet on George Washington. He pulled it off. Yeah. So Somehow, anyway, some way. So anyway, God bless America. We're looking to bring the Patriot mm -hmm. in to Spo. So that's a nice. segue. We can try to get the Patriot sooner than later, hopefully before um, Fourth of July. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't know if you've I know you're you're really pushing for this week, but April looks to be shaping up really nice. There's been some advertising on that too. I don't know how much we we want to say. Mm -hmm. We actually, from what I'm understanding, there's going to be a lot announced Sunday. I'm thinking mm -hmm. is what it yeah. looks like from what I'm hearing. Um, but yeah, and that is stuff. Mania weekend, so there could be some surprises. Yep. Well, I'll tell you right now, I will go on record right now and to say that we do have a surprise for Sunday. I mean, come on. 
come on, you're bored. We're your boys. We got you. You know, <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> so yeah, man, buy your advanced tickets. There's still some left uh, for GA. Just go to spowrestling.com and uh, and go ahead and buy them. April 7th tickets are already on sale and will be on sale. Uh, they will continue to be on sale. So, and then our event after that is going to be May 19th. Um, tickets for that will not go on sale uh, for any time soon, but we'll announce it when it does. So, is that a Sunday too? Yeah, so far we're all, all three are the Sundays. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I mm. love that Sundays are, are being used, um, so especially a Sunday afternoon that <laughs> get home early enough to have dinner. <laughs> and the talent we have access to. If you run on yeah. Friday night, Saturday night, these guys are all over the world, you know, like we would never get Sunny Kiss. We would never get Tommy Dreamer, you know, right. because they're such in demand talents, you know. So you getting getting them on on their way home. And yeah. I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll I'll squeeze another show in on a Sunday afternoon and you know, like I said, be home still be home Sunday night. That's it. That's it. So what you gonna do tonight, Kamish? Uh, tonight flyers are in Toronto, so I'm going to be watching that. Nice. Um, nice. That, that's probably it for, for tonight. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's a simple life. <laughs> that's it, man. That's how you got to live, brother. That's yeah, it. For at her. this age. Yeah. I mean, look at a wrestler's life, the amount of time you put in the gym. And then if you're trying to run a wrestling promotion on top of it, you have to live a simple life. You're not, you're not out doing the highfalutin stuff, brother. You're right. trying to talk neighbors into going to the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> yeah, right. We got such, a show. Oh, not such a loaded show. question. Why is not John another. taking an interest? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was really tough with OTW because we ran 40 shows a year. We ran every Saturday afternoon, almost, except in the summertime because it was we were in a warehouse and we had no AC. You know, and then we would run a monthly nighttime show too. So people got tired of hearing, Hey, what are you doing? They'd run the other way. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Honestly, I think that's coming back now is these weekly shows on the indies. I'm hearing a lot of promoters saying they're trying to run um weekly this year. So yeah, and, and you know what? And if and if you can and then, and it's great, especially these smaller promotions that if they're tied in with a school or they they're, they're it's out of a school. Um, this is what we did with OTW. You know, we tried to tell a story. We, we had we had storylines set up so that if you came back, if you came with one Saturday, came back the next Saturday, you know, there would be something tied in together. Not everything, but, you know, there would be a few things tied in together. And we would use our, our monthly nighttime show as like, you know, leading to like, like what Raw and SmackDown would do lead to a pay-per-view. Well, we'd be leading to Saturday night. Yes. So, yeah. And, and it, I think it was great for the, the students. It was a great way for them to learn how, how to tell a story without being overly repetitive. Um, you know, if, if you're working one promotion one week, one promotion the next week, and, 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 you know, you're working, you know, let's say you're working every weekend and you're working for different promotions, you can get away with having the same match, basically. But if you're working for the same promotion every week, you can't have that same match. It's... The, the old territory. Yep. You, know, you can't do the same thing next week back in Memphis. You got to do something a little different when, when you're in mm -hmm. Memphis next Monday night. Yeah. And the fans do seem to be, I don't know, conditioned for that cycle that you just explained of the week and they're leading into the pay-per-view and leading into right. it like that. It's almost like a circadian rhythm for the wrestling fan. And, and I think that's why the weekly has such a, uh, it's almost, it's almost like, um, a lure it, it lures you in but it's it, you can get burnt right. you know you can you can burn out real fast you can spend too much money you can you know make it to the point where you've already promoted everywhere you can and there's nowhere right. else to promote right in otw we we burn out the building because that was all we ran was that one building um but if if you're a small promotion and your your events are close enough that you can tell the story that hopefully you're bringing the same people that are you know, go to every show then you can tell that story. Hell yeah. Awesome. Plus now everything's videotaped or I shouldn't say video, but everything's, you know, recorded and streamed. So streamed. the fans that don't make it, they can, you know, watch it. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. Have you gone back and watched all the old ECW stuff? Yeah. 
<laughs> you are you someone that are you someone that likes to watch your own work or can't watch your own work? Um, no, I can watch it. Um, not that I like to, but I'll watch it. Um, there are certain things I look for, or or I want to see again, or you know, somebody will say, you know, talk about a match, and I'm like, I don't remember it, and I'll go back and look at it. Um, right. But yeah, there's there are certain things that I can watch. I can't watch it on on the Peacock because they changed all the music and takes a lot away from, it takes a lot of mm -hmm. the um, emotion away I when know. You do something mm -hmm. like that like the you know can you imagine the night the sandman came back to the company with different music yeah no yeah, yeah. it's it's unwatchable half the time like going back yeah. and watching some of that stuff and it's like you know between like hacks music and you know new jack's music and then you know sometimes they uh Sometimes they have to completely, you know, like overdub stuff just because of how like inaudible it was. But to your point, it's like it it, it takes the magic out of the moment because you're in the you, you're in there and it's like you guys are cooking. So it's like it's, sure. it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it justice. And they they do it not just with with ECW. They did it with, you know, old NWA stuff and old Mid-South. Uh, I mean, the, there, there's one I forget where it was. Uh, Midnight Express against the Rock and Roll Express, where the Midnights were in the ring and the rock and mm -hmm. roll music hits, and you can't even see see them because they're the crowd the, are so on top of them that they couldn't ba they could barely make it to the ring. But all you hear is the music. Here's some other kind of music, it doesn't make any kind of sense. Yeah, probably you know the words rock and roll aren't even in the music that they they, they use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then to that point also, it's like a lot of those, a lot of those acts, a lot of their, like a lot of their, their shit was their entrance, you know, like half the time it's like, you know, those, those great guys of the eighties and the nineties. And it's like, get your shit in just meant like, take your time in the entrance. You know, the, that, yeah. that's why a lot of them yeah, had to you, work in the you, ring. You've got 20 minutes. Well, the, the fantastic <laughs> killed, fantastic killed 10, get into the ring. God bless. <laughs> kissing, kissing every girl and you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> all the way around the ring. <laughs> so true yeah red hot heat man if those days would ever come back for tag teams man oh. i it's my dream to main event our tag titles that i would love that you it's know doable yeah it, it's, it's very doable yeah I, I think it's time for i think the fans are ready for it you know sometimes they say fans need to be re-educated well i think i think they're ready to be whether that's yeah. the right term to use or not, but I think they're ready to be excited about something good. And, you know how and, they, you know how you they know, say, you have Jim, to give that, them that intensity. Yeah, you know how they say you hit rock bottom. There's nowhere to go but up. Don't you think COVID was kind of rock bottom for wrestling fans? Yeah, I mean, it was almost unwatchable with no one in the crowd. And God bless the wrestlers for still killing it out there yeah. like they did. No, it, was, it was hard. It was tough. We could have uh, lost. Not, not that the matches were were bad or. No, you know, it just there was that disconnect. Yeah, we're lucky mm -hmm. to still have wrestling. If that would have gone on another year or two, how long would the TV stations have kept wrestling? Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have a lot to be thankful for. And, and you know, another year or two would have absolutely killed the independence. Oh, yes, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and. You know, and that's another thing we're dealing with right now, Jim, is what you just said about the copyrights. You know, like we want to live stream our stuff, but you cannot charge even a penny if even one of those entrance musics is copyrighted. So, right. you know, you got to really rethink all that. And even on the indies, like the Backseat Boys, like, what are we without our music? Like, that's going to be weird. Like, to us, that means something. So imagine all these young guys having to make their own music. That's what's going to probably start happening. You come to a wrestling school. And they say, well, yeah, well, you know, you've, you've trained for a year. We're going to put you in a ring. Where's your music? It's going to have here, to be that. Here's, here's an option to think of. How about no music? What is that? What, what does that force the wrestler to do? To be um, more charismatic. It'll also force the crowd to be louder because of the uncomfortableness that could happen. Well, it, it'll, it'll force the, the wrestler to get to express to the crowd whether they're a heel or a face coming to the ring i mean the, the problem with music is everyone wants cool music um a heel should be coming out to music that people hate true 
you know, whatever my my least favorite song of all time is Cars by Gary Newman. And and I would throw popcorn at whoever came out to Cars if I was in a crowd. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, it you know, even if and take your favorite song and, and give it to, you know, the the wrong person, you know, I'm not gonna cheer on. I'll tell you though, man, music nowadays with the younger generation and, and Tommy will tell you, it's like, it means more than it even did to us. These guys with the music and the beats in the background, you know, people are walking through their day with their earphones and listening to music 24 seven. Like I didn't used to do that. Even if I did have my Walkman on, it was just on the bus or laying in bed. It wasn't in public. And so to that point, yeah. and to that point too, uh, you know, Cause I've definitely, we, we, you know, we've done shows, um, that there weren't, uh, that we didn't get music. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at the OTW venue, um, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, you, that was, and that was very early on in our career. Um, so I do believe that it is a learning curve that everybody should endure at least, um, you know, a handful of times because it would help not only, uh, condition the wrestlers to go out there and, you know, have to work that much harder, but it would also condition the fans to maybe not be so reliant on the, uh, on the cheap pop of the, uh, of the song, because to that point too, it is, it's, it's very easy to, to cheer for music. It's very easy to get amped up. Pavlovian. It's Pavlovian. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like mm-hmm. a reaction you almost do without even thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, you mm-hmm. know, whatever music comes on, the, the guy in the crowd, goes, oh, it's my favorite song. Oh, this guy's an asshole. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And our music, so is, of, it starts Limp Biscuit for like a second, dan, dan, and then switches <laughs> to the, the chase. And you can hear people in the crowd, like the air go out, like, damn, we actually wanted to hear Limp Biscuit once you teased it, and then you took it away from us. So they start getting mad. And I'm like, that sucks. And then I realized, but we're heels. That's good. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And then hear the midnight express and then it's like, oh, I see what's up. And then it's almost like uh, either they, either they love it, or they can't stand it, but either way, it's some sort of a reaction and it invokes some sort of a visceral sense of like, this is like, this is kind of cool. Like either which way, you know, you know, to what Jim real quick, what I think's neat is nowadays, as opposed to when I started in like 98 and stuff, each wrestler is like their own curator of their own museum they all have their own gimmick and their own catchphrases and nicknames i feel like when i started it was almost up to the promoter to help you with that stuff you know what i mean now promoters have no say it's just like they pick and choose it's almost like you go to an auction i'll take that wrestler that wrestler that wrestler but you don't really get to change them much because they're already fully flushed out as to what they want to be right look at a, a you know the concept of the wrestling school a lot of the times the the trainers say you know, for your, your first handful of matches, okay, this is what you're going to do, you know, as opposed to tell me what you want to do. Right. Because God Absolutely. forbid, and th- this happened, the you know, OTW, you know, guy come, he came in and he's like six foot two and like, okay, what do you want to do? I want to do the 619. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> right. <here." laughs> right. Nobody's, nobody's going to believe that you're a Ray Mysterio or, you know, mm-hmm. I need you to be a, a, your version of, Dusty Rhodes, or I need you to be your version of The Rock. Yeah. Or you know, like we had we had one student who was a, a law student as he was training. So we're like, okay, so you're highly educated. So your name is going to be I am smarter. Nice. <laughs> and it it worked for a little bit. He knew better than to sign the release before he got in the ring. I heard too. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's great so jim i'll I'll tell you man we we could talk to you for hours and i would love to sit and talk longer um but we just have one more match to mention and then we're out of here you want to just stick around and help us out sure word so what were we on by the way tommy your match right well it was uh the scramble match but we did uh briefly want to discuss uh the live debut of pat Pat. dynamite pat dynamite ellis taylor so Ellis Open Taylor's challenge. a guy, Ellis Taylor, Pat Dynamite, um, is um, one of the young, dumb, and broke guys, along with Jordan Oliver, Griffin McCoy, and Charlie Tiger. These guys are from around here. You know, Jordan's overseas right now working in uh, Europe. He's a GCW regular. Uh, Griffin's recently in GCW. Well, Pat, Pat's one of my good friends. He's in that clique of guys. He's young. 
He's amazing in the ring. He's got this new character that he's envisioning that has to do with pyromania and fireworks. And fireworks are legal in Jersey now. So I figure let's embrace this and see what Pat has to offer. So a sudden death open challenge. I don't even know what that means. He said, trust him. Let's see what he has. To I, I don't know. I expect the unexpected when it comes to, you know, Pat Dynamite and expect the unexpected when it comes to a pyromaniac. And speaking <laughs> of pyromaniacs and fireworks, uh, Johnny, you said that this fatal four-way scramble tag is going to be fireworks in Burlington City between yep. the back seats, the rep, Golden Era, and the Silk City Kings. You know, I know you said from the jump that you wanted uh, Spo to be heavily focused on tag team wrestling. Tell me, you know, what do you – like? What do you think is going to happen in this match? Because I could sit here and I could say that, you know, the back seats will retain. But, you know, that that's like saying that the sky is blue. So what are you, as an outsider, thinking about this match personally? The way I look at it is in a match like this, the fans win. Because it doesn't matter which team wins, doesn't matter which team loses. You're going to see some of the best wrestling. And you're going to see less time between moves because when one guy goes down, the next guy comes back into the ring. The fans in Burlington may have never seen anything like this. So it's important that we let people understand, like, this is what a scramble match is. When I was a kid, there wasn't even a three-way dance match. That, that came the triangle match, I think, was WCW. And then ECW really made right. the three-way dance. Um, but there was never four-way scramble matches. That was us in Ring of Honor that started all that. You know, I mean, the back seats were in the original scramble cage match and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's interesting, like, you know, if you have if you have uh, cruiserweights, their ultimate match would be like a ladder match. Right. Well, if you have tag teams, their ultimate match is the scramble. I mean, that's it. So if you're going to see everyone shine at once, instead of seeing four sons, you put them together and now you get a supernova. And that's what we're going to have. Super. And the fans aren't even going to be able to take a breath. Like you right. said, one's out, next one's in. Boom, 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 boom. Not not just move, move, move. It's it's wrestler, wrestler, wrestler. You know. Have your popcorn. Absolutely. Use the restroom. <laughs> make sure you can sit and watch that match for these titles <laughs> because the tag titles um, mean a lot to these guys. I know it. I'm I'm partners with these guys. These guys are my partners. I know what what drives them, and I know what they're going to pull out this Saturday, this Sunday. And I'm, I'm excited. I can only speak on behalf of myself and my partner and say that the back seats will do whatever it takes to retain the belts at any and all costs. But I have a feeling that those other three teams, I have a feeling that we're going to have to hit them with everything we've got. And then some, and that's all I'm going to say about their integrity. None of these teams are slouches. So you do that always anyway, brother. You do it always anyway. So let's just remind people before we get out of here, you can still check out the backseat body combo at Burlington Nutrition. So when you come down to the show, um, instead of going right to the building at, at 2 o'clock when doors open, head over uh, four blocks, three blocks down to Burlington Nutrition and grab a tea gimmick, which gives you energy like you would not believe, and mm -hmm. the mint chocolate chip backseat muscle builder shake, which is delicious. Uh, Tommy, we split one. It was awesome, right? I loved it, man. I'm a mint chocolate chip fanatic and you know, it's all mm -hmm. mint. So that's right. <laughs> the tea, the tea gimmick wasn't half bad either. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're still uh, offering kids birthday parties. So if that's something uh, that you might be interested in, it is something that we're offering. Um, so anytime coming up, just hit me up and we can talk about that. And then That's finally, right. the last thing is uh, Todd's book. Don't forget, you can get Todd's book. I'm going to try to have it for sale on April 7th. Um, Todd can't make it himself, but I'm going to try to have at least a few copies of his book there for sale um, and as giveaways as well. Um, Todd helped us get Scorpio for that date. Um, and Todd is my surrogate father in wrestling. So as far as I'm concerned, he can do no wrong. <laughs> so I want to help him out. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything, Tommy. You got anything else? 
I think I'm all set, all good to go. Oh, real quick, I just wanted to mention this coming weekend, this Saturday, uh, we have ACW in Rockland County, New York, Havistraw, New York. That is yes. beat downs and heartbreaks, featuring some of the talent from Spo Wrestling, inclu including NWA's own Wrecking Ball Ligurski and the Backseat Boys. In the main event of that show, of course, is going to be the Backseat Boys and Canadian legend killer Channing Decker taking on Dominic De Niro and Midnight Delight. Other than that, I think we're all good to go, and I think nice. uh, everything was discussed. Uh, Jim, any last-minute words, Commissioner? No, we'll we'll see you guys. See the fans at the matches. You, you know, like like they used to say, bring you know you have the whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge. Uh, that's mm. it. I love it. Well, guys, it's time to take it home. <laughs> We'll see you guys. Hope to come out Sunday. Tickets still available. And we'll see you Monday with a recap right here at 730. Same bat time. Same bat channel. <laughs>